Yeah, hey, welcome to another Just Enough Heshi show. And I just want you to know that we're getting serious. Election time is coming. And I'm going to preach to you what I need for you guys to do. And I'm ready to rock and roll. I even had my tie dirty and I had to put Windex on it today. My granddaughter made it dirty. <laughs> I saw the video. You saw the video? It was very cool. But tonight's show is a very interesting show. We have a wonderful lady, Toby Rubinstein, sitting next to me. Her husband doesn't trust us alone, so he had to join the show with us. I don't know what's wrong with him. You know what I mean? I, and then I tried to grab him, and then Toby says, you can't touch my husband. I don't win either way. I don't know what's going on. But then he tried to grab her, and he said, you can't touch my wife. No, no, no. He blocked me. Don't get me wrong. He said, fat man, stay back. You know what I mean? I didn't like that fat man comment. I don't know, Toby. Why did he call me fat? He, he did. Uh, <laughs> he really did. But if you want to like pretend that he did for a good show, go right ahead. I, you see how beautiful this lady's next to me. We're going to talk to Toby in a second. But Bumi, welcome back. How are you? I am fine. Exhausted I'm, as always. I'm so happy. I'm okay. so I'm so happy that you're not wearing your vest. It's a hundred degree weather, and thank God that vest is gone. People love you when you wear that vest. You look so handsome. Well, don't I always, whether I'm wearing the vest or not. But for those that are missing the vest, let them know that it'll be back. Come on. Okay, shut up. And next we have my beautiful Sawyer. You look just more... Hi, everybody. You look... Has she cut it? Toby, does she look hot, Toby? <laughs> She's a very beautiful woman. Wow. Toby's I don't think just... she enjoys being called hot. So okay. Just say that you're in the presence of very beautiful. Look at this, between Sawyer and Toby, I feel like I'm sitting in a harem of beauty over here. Okay. It's incredible. <laughs> Toby, get out. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just start. Anyways, we have Toby Rubenstein. Not only is she a friend, not only is she a, a wonderful uh, designer, she had your own show, right? You have your own show? I, had, I was telling my husband I had my own radio show for two years. Right. So and I'm very accustomed. To she's it. very accustomed, but we're on camera now, Toby. I know, I had so a TV show smile? too. TV Did show? you have a TV show? Because I, I don't remember. Show. I don't have a TV show. Okay. You know, you were supposed to put on lipstick when you come on the show. I'm sorry. Yes, she, she had a TV now, show, I have, I have a, a radio show. I'm okay, so but, sorry. But Toby, you, I, I have a fight with Wait, my... Wait, I have lipstick in my... No, 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 no stop it. I, I have Wait. a fight with my nieces and my and my uh, uh, other people. They put on this yellow lipstick, black lipstick. I tell them a lady must always wear red. You no. think so? Okay, so we're going to talk about the that, fashion. That's a fantasy. So Toby, okay, so Toby has yes. written a book, The House of Faith and Fashion, which we're going to talk about because she's a very religious woman. She's a very holy woman. Plus, she's very elegant, and we're going to talk about how this comes into effect. I want to talk about a lot about the city, and we're going to talk about a lot of different issues. We're going to also talk about today was my last day of community service, and I want to tell you in 100-degree weather, the community service people where they put me screwed me. I want you to know about it, and you're going to hear what, what happened as well. But ladies and gentlemen out there, this show is sponsored by HeshiTishler.com, by the committee to elect Heshi Tishler or Harold Tishler. We are going to win on June 22nd. You want to change? You want somebody to stand up for you? I was the guy there for you. You want to scream at me? You know, I can tell you stories. You know, this week I, I walked to Flatbush, and Toby, I want you to hear this. I walked deep into Flatbush, and I went to four different synagogues, and I even went to a synagogue for one of my competitors because he came to my synagogue and spoke <laughs> and they let me speak over there and when I was in one of the last synagogues for one of the boys that you know always hung out in my house he just got married last night gorgeous boy you should see built like an animal you know what I mean a soldier and he was always with me always loved me and I showed up at the wedding and I took all my pictures and when I went to his party for the Saturday before there was like 250 people that loved me one guy started screaming at me and threw liquor at me. Now, I was going to fight back with him, but everybody held me back. He says, Heshi, you're in a synagogue, you can't fight back. I said, but I don't understand. Constantly, there's people coming after us, and we're going to talk about what happened today in our neighborhood. Last week, they came after me, the Palestinians, to my house to beat me up. And, you know, this is just, the city is wild, wild west. We had a shooting murder on one of our blocks, but we're going to get to all of this. Let's let's pay for the show, not really pay for it, because we're, you know, it's sponsored by Heshi Tishler, so we're not even charging money for this let's go to work we have what web high tech web group have you been pushing off remodeling or creating a website well now you don't have to any longer let high tech web groups team of professionals construct your site with skill and precision you can reach high tech web group at 212-235-2777 that's 212-235-2777 check out their website at info at hightechwebgroup.com that's H I T E C H W E B G R O U P dot com. Call High Tech Web Group today so you can experience a whole new world of business. 
Do you, like, do you like the way she does the green baby? Oh, I love it. I'm two, seven, it's like music seven, seven. Do you know when I do the commercials at the beginning, how she used to yell at me, enthusiasm, enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah, but, no, but, I, you don't give me pom-poms. You I'm, don't give me... You don't need it. I'm working yeah. over here on a limited budget over I here. I got you. We're looking at it. You have natural charisma. She does. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's, let's, get, let's get these commercials over before people start going away. We have Plaza Auto Leasing. They are not only a leasing company, but also a dealership. You get the best of both worlds. The flexibility to lease or buy any vehicle, make or model, combined with quick service, huge inventory, and easy approval. There is no finance manager to meet with, just a friendly pal sales representative that can handle most of the transaction from start to finish without you even having to step foot in their office. All you have to do is place your order and they will even deliver your car right to your door. What are you waiting for? Become a pal and call Plaza Auto Leasing today. You can reach Plaza Auto Leasing at 718-975-9000. That's 718-975-9000. You can also check out their website at www.plazaautoleasing.com. Located at 2750 2750 Nostrand Avenue on the corner of Nostrand Avenue and Avenue N. Call 718-975-9000 and become a pal today. And don't forget to tell them, Uncle has she sent you. I love the guy. 718-275-9000. 975. 975. Nine, I'm not getting paid for this. Uh, I want you to know, he's really a great auto leasing. I'm giving him my car, even though it's all banged up. I'm in big trouble. I hope they take it back. Next. We have Cooks. Baruch's Barbershop. Baruch's Barbershop. That's Hashi Special Barber, you the know, one that manages he, to cut out only the gray hairs. I just want you to know, not only did he do a good job, I went to the wedding yesterday and somebody wrote, wrote me a text today, you look like a million dollars. Baruch, I love you. Located at 108 Avenue I, you can reach Baruch's Barbershop at 718-758-5187. That's 718-758-5187. Or... Call, text, or WhatsApp Baruch personally to schedule your appointment at 347-845-9131. That's 347-845-9131. The official singing barber of Heshi Tischler. I love the guy. He's really pretty good. Go ahead. What do we got last on the list? We have Green Line Building Solutions, located at 2... Preservation and Development, Fire Department, Criminal Court Department, the Finance, Environmental Control Board, Settlements, Building Consulting, Violation Removal, Construction Management, Owner Compliance, Contracting, License Department of Building Expeditors, Designs, Professionals okay, for all your buildings. So you give me the words and then you... Call me saying, etc., etc. 202 Foster Avenue. Taking notes. They're located at 202 Forster Avenue, 718-871-0382. That's 718-871-0382. Okay, I love you. And then, of course, we have HeshiTishler.com. Guys, go to my website. HeshiTishler.com is the place to go. We are uh, uh, coming down to the last two weeks. Tuesday, June 22nd is election day. Go to my website. Go to early voting. There's the New York, the, the Board of Elections absentee website. Mail-in ballots? Mail-in ballots you can request still. You can still request for uh, um, uh, to go early voting from June 12th till uh, June, I think, 20th. You can go to the polls and vote. Come out, guys. I need you. This is not a joke. You know, Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the home stretch now. Heshi has shown that he has delivered in the past. He's been here for you all along, and he will continue to be here. He has fought for you, and he continues to fight for you. And he is clearly the most qualified candidate, most able to do the job, and he has proven it. He needs every single vote, and every single vote counts. Get out and do your thing. Vote. We're less Vote than two Hesh. weeks away from the June 22nd primary election this year. All New York City voters can vote by mail by requesting an absentee ballot. The deadline to request your ballot is June 15th. Um, we recommend that you submit your request as soon as possible. Um, That's it? Yeah, it takes less than min two minutes to do this. And then, of course, we have, uh, 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 we're going to start the show right now because we're done with the rest of the commercials for, uh, for now. We have our shout-outs. We have our shout-out. My shout-out, of course, goes to my granddad, Mira Nava. Mira, Mira Nava, who today was with me in the pizza shop. Mira Nava! <laughs> yeah. you know, and my, my, you know, you my, know? Uh, my Shoshana. Okay, and then, of course, Ellie, my Ellie that I have put away, and Sergeant Peter. Sergeant Peter! And, and Shani and Dove Hyken. Shani and Dove Hyken. Who did, as usual, a wonderful job, Dove did, out there in Israel. 
right on top of you things. Know, you know, after the Palestinians, Toby, I'm going to tell you about this, Palestinians came to my house to beat me up with Black Lives Matter, and they're saying it wasn't Black Lives Matter. Even Pastor McCall called me. These are not our people, and it was these crazy Palestinians. Now they've been calling me, threatening me. I was in the police station where they make fake calls, and I showed it to the police, and they did nothing about it. They arrested one of the two guys, and they didn't give him an order of protection. Me, they give order of protections if I look at somebody wrong way. Not only that, uh, the, the lady detective that came here uh, was the one who came to arrest me the first time I think I told you and I threw out I said you come here you don't know what you're doing I don't need you but the captain sent some two other good detectives but the second guy they didn't even come close to getting and this is what I'm trying to tell you the mayor has them uh, uh, wrapped around the finger they're scared of him he's giving them orders he's torturing our police officers we need a better city council well, that, that's going to change things I'm I mean, sorry, they've the been mayor hard ties for the longest time you're saying how horrible he is right now he's sitting I don't want to even say with both his thumbs no, he's doing it, it, zero he's right not, now he knows he's on the way you out are, you are making and a he mistake. wants to do even more damage you are making a mistake the mayor is doing a great job What's he doing? Emptying the piggy bank no, before no, no, he leaves? No, it wasn't no, enough what his no, wife no, no, took and no, he took? I don't want you all to get nervous. He is making sure that everybody in this city gets a free donut and some free french fries <laughs> if you get vaccinated. Okay. Wonderful deal. From and, Shake Shack, right? And, by, and just remember, he wants you to get healthy by getting unhealthy. Mr. <laughs> Mayor, you are brilliant. This shows the idiocracies. And I know people get upset that I call the mayor dumb. But anyways, we're going to start our show. But first, I have to give you a quote yeah I, that's what we do it we have a quote and joke, joke of the of week death. okay and, go and, ahead and you must laugh at it okay i will okay here's my quote it's very serious good people have to do not good things sometimes for the greater good we must stand up to bullies especially if they are powerful bullies you know that's interesting i was very shocked actually that the fact when you got struck by that palestinian that attacked you didn't hit him hard right back. I don't know how you managed to so contain I, yourself you because why. you're not a small guy and you, you you pack a punch. So I called the police when 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 they started to come out right away, whatever. Somebody told me, he says, Heshi, if you hit back, you both can get arrested. Ah. So so I blocked him twice. Then he got two shots to my head. There, was, there were two guys. Two they guys. came from the other they, side. One guy came from the other, other side. side. So uh, you know what? I could have just heard him. You could, sure you could have heard I him. I didn't even fall down. But you know, and then I went to the hospital with Sawyer. They gave us a hard time, as you saw in my video, and, and they got upset that we videotaped it, but Sawyer's so smart, she stuck the... Uh, so, but Heshi, <laughs> do not say where I stuck my phone. <laughs> she stuck the phone the somewhere. Heshi! I can't tell you, but she stuck the phone. But that's it, so that was my joke, and, I, and that was my quote of the day. But you know what I, I heard today? You know, by 9-11... When the buildings were coming down, you saw people running away during the fire, during the attacks. But you saw the wonderful policemen and firemen who lost their lives running into, into the fire. A man, a good politician, a good leader runs into trouble, runs towards the trouble to fix it. And that's who I am. I'm not trying to brag right now, but there's two weeks to the election, and I'm going to tell you my well, You've done it time and time again. And Everybody time. knows that. And, and that's my point, guys. And not only that, when you ran and you did... Other people took credit for That's it. That's right. And you got into trouble. It's a fine. So here's my joke. And of course, you know, it's something to do with Linda. <laughs> always. Oh, that, always. I have I to watch out Linda. when you get home tonight again. <laughs> I, make fun of I like I you, Linda. It's Toby. <laughs> Anyways, so let me tell you what Linda did. Linda did not call me fat. She called me handsome. But she made me a hard time uh, Saturday night because I had a long walking trip and I didn't get home till 4.30 Saturday afternoon. Linda was upset because usually we have lunch about 1 or 2 o'clock with guests. And I didn't make it home till 4.30 and I was exhausted. I sat on the couch. I fell asleep a little bit. And uh, she woke me up. So she made me miserable so Sunday, woke me up early, says, Heshi, I can't take this anymore. I need you to go for a run. I said, what does that mean? Put on your sweatpants and go for a run. I said, and she made me miserable. She needs so, you to go for a run because right. she can't take it anymore. No, no, she wants me to lose weight. Do you not get it? You're not too smart, Bumi. Um, excuse me? You go to the gym every okay. single day. What does it mean? Go for a run. Go for a run means exercise. Yeah, well, well, the question was, is why does she need you to go for a run if she can't take it anymore? Okay, stop. Okay. stop. It's my joke. Don't mix in. Okay. Anyways, so I got my sweatpants on, and I went for a run. And I came back a couple of minutes later. And Linda says, uh, I don't understand. What, why did you come back? I said, I forgot something. She says, what did you forget, has she? I said, I forgot I can't run. You see, you see, I got somebody to find you. You see, you see why I brought him. 
I love it. Because I didn't think it's funny. <laughs> we have a, somebody's telling us, two, three people are telling me we have a big screaming problem. Like last week, it says, yes. Good. A screaming problem? A streaming, a streaming problem. A streaming. Mr. Oh. Producer, we're getting notice of a streaming problem, if I may. I don't know. I don't know what his problem is. He always does it. Anyways, we are going to talk to our guests right now. That was my joke in quarter day. We have a bunch of stuff that we're going to discuss, but uh, we're going to ask, we're going to talk to Toby first for a minute. Are we going to uh, talk but, politics? And, talk and we have some lines. We can. We can. We've actually we can. got some lines ringing already. We're going to be thinking, but you, I want you to know what happened today. Today, in our neighborhood, in the 48th district, the, uh, 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 um, uh, a black man, and I'm sorry to say, walks into Bravo Pizza. Walks into the pizza. Listen to me, Isn't Toby. it ba Bosch's Pizza? Bosch's Pizza. On Avenue walk, J? Right. Walks into the pizza shop. You see it on video. He starts throwing things over. No, just walks in, throwing over he tables. He turned over desk, tables. Tables, chairs. One man alone. One man but alone. why didn't they take him down? So they ran out of the store. Then he ran. Actually, did you see I saw the video? Somebody I don't know who it was. But there was a girl in the video, you see a girl leaving, I'm guessing, to the bathroom in the back. And he's like a second behind her. He's coming in. So he just missed and hitting she got lucky. girl. Wait. He starts going in. One guy take, drags a chair to block so that he shouldn't go to the back. And they go to the back. Right. You see people running out. And then one guy, he's wearing all black, a young guy. He takes a some chair. sort of chair, I think a chair, like one of those wooden frame right. chair or a tray holder or something, and he throws it at the guy, and the guy looks at him, he's coming after him, and he runs out, and the guy chases after him. Now, had he not done that, those people that were backed up in the back may have been hurt. And severely so he, hurt. So he chases them out of the store. He guy runs away. Why then, didn't somebody pick up a chair and break it over his so, head right so there's so one guy? He's a pizza right. shop, young guys. And again, you, it's very it's hard. It's very so, scared. You so, don't know what weapons so they have? He ran, he, he ran after them. He ran out of the store. And then you see on the video, he crosses the street to run away. Then he chases another young Jewish guy back. And he pushes him. And a couple of people saw this already on the street. They attacked him, grabbed him, and held him on the store. The first guy that jumped on him in the street right that's what you call now, real bravery so, they have it on video thank god so they held him down and i saw him them asking him why did you do it he says all jews are crackers now i don't know crackers what crackers. crackers that means you know like a white uh, person you know, like a white person or i would say like it happens to be wrong there are many black jews as well there's entire ethiopian right. communities uh, yeah. we're not, we're not uh, all we're not crackers. talking about somebody that made an educated but this guess. is what i'm telling <laughs> you the city is lost and this mayor comes when he wants even you know uh, and i like eric adams but he made with the fjcc a private little uh press conference they ripped down my post at pescada i posted a, my poster up there they ripped it down two people were at this press press conference N nobody real fjcc and they endorsed eric adams and what eric adams said you know what he said on the commercial um, one oh of boy. his debates he says i want the city to go back to the way dinkins ran oh my oh god. god help us help us in 1990 whatever it was right. and then and then we had the riots, the riots and, and people are you kidding me but this is who eric he wants to go right. regress and then during the debate the mayoral debate they ask who wants to get the blasio or cuomo's endorsement no Nobody raised the hand except for Yang. So these are <laughs> our two front runners, Yang and and. and I Eric want Adams. the nomination from the stupidest yes, mayor man. we've ever had. Right. So I just want you to know that this city, and then of course we had the murder uh, two days ago on uh, uh, Church Avenue and East Third Street. I mean, it just continues. The, 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 I heard the, about a cop committing suicide. Not suicide. And who even uh, who would even want to be a, who would want to be a cop now? But, you see what's going on in this murder. country. I'm East 19th and Avenue U again in the middle of the district, in the middle of the day. I'm not talking at night. I'm not talking early in the morning. People are coming and Has going she, in the middle of the street. We're going to take a call. I the, saw the inspector being so for, badly disrespected. In the middle of the day, they went and attacked a jeweler and robbed him of hundreds of thousands of dollars in jewelry in the middle of the day, in the middle of the street, and nobody does anything. But I want to, before we take a phone call, I want to talk to you about Toby. Toby wrote this beautiful book. And Toby, I'm not going to, to, to embarrass you, but I know that you're a holy woman, you believe in God, which, which, and you've gone through a lot of troubles and tri uh, tribulations, uh, personal, which I'm not going to say without your permission, but you've come back. And, and here's my problem for, with you, Toby. Hey, you have a problem with I me already? I have a problem. Okay, go ahead. You've gone through, I, I've gone through a lot of stuff, and, and I complain all the time, as my listeners can hear, but you've gone through some serious stuff. Why do you still believe in God? I mean, I, I mean is, isn't he just... 
bothering you? I mean, he, he, first of all, by the way, first 10 callers get a free book. Uh, we will send it out to you, and the, uh, and the producer will take your number. What's wrong with you, Toby? What's wrong with me is what's right with me. Uh, talk it to the Okay, mic. what's tell wrong with me is what's right with me. What's okay, what's so wait, I'm going to answer go your question first. Because uh, why do I believe in God after all the adversity that I had? Because I believe that all my adversities were given to me for a purpose. God, God decided that this is what he's going to bestow upon me. And it, it's my job to find out what that purpose is. So all the because good you've done. All the, because God doesn't do anything bad to you. I really believe that, and I have, and I have it upon authority because I've had many bad things happen to me. So, Toby, I, I'm not going to make fun of you, but no, you know, you, uh, go I'm ahead, make fun of me. Because That's okay. you know, you know, our mayor gives away. I told you free French fries and cookies and okay. stuff with a vaccine. I also heard today you're going to love this in Washington State or something of that nature. They're giving away free marijuana if you take the vaccine. Oh yeah, <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Isn't that good? So well, how you are they know, giving it to you? You know, I have to tell you that. Are you, are you smoking marijuana? No, absolutely. I have to tell you, but <laughs> even, even one better. In Toby. Hong Kong, they're actually giving away a 1.3 million dollar lottery for an apartment if you get the if you get the vaccine. So uh, there, there are cities that are doing better mm -hmm. than French fries. When did they give you the <laughs> marijuana? Before or right after you do the vaccine? I want to know, because technically you have to sign a waiver that you're not going to sue Moderna and all these other companies when you get the vaccine. No, so maybe they, maybe now sign. they need to get you high no, before no, you no, sign no. it? I didn't sign no waiver. Technically, wait, um, what it voids the the signature. Way. So, Toby, tell me a little bit about the book before we pick up call. Tell me what's okay. the book about. The, the book is called The House of Faith and Fashion, What My Wardrobe Taught Me About God. And it really... What about your wardrobe? What my wardrobe taught me about God. And the book is actually about so many, the many, fusion... Okay, go ahead. I, I, go right. ahead. Okay. Interrupt just, me. I mean, it's okay. Wardrobe meaning... I just want to know. Is it all the all the, all the wardrobe a woman wears or just uh, uh, fancy dresses or stuff like that? No, it's it's it's... Well, it's about all aspects of a wardrobe. All aspects of the wardrobe, including your jewelry, oh. your shoes, uh, beauty, style. I, it's I all personally about see divinity every time I see an attractive woman wearing something short and tight. I mean, so I agree with that. Oh, God. Okay, with yeah, the <laughs> total, total male point of view. I, I totally <laughs> understand. Even mean. though I, I don't have a sneers police in it. There's right. no modesty <laughs> police in here, so I'm not going to I'm not going to chastise anybody for their opinion about that. But uh, the book is about how what you would think these two subjects that are totally void of each other because in fashion you don't think of anything that has anything that has faith in it and in faith you don't think anything fashionable they're usually completely opposite of each other and through my essays in in this book and through the each chapter i show you that it's all from the Torah. Give us an example. God is the first couturier. Give, give us an example. I'll give you a great example. The first essay is about, um, it's called Monday at the Met. Okay, so it's all about the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and everybody knows about the famous Met Ball that everybody loves the to gala. look at. The, the gala is fabulous, and the Metropolitan Mu Costume Exhibit. Well, there's one exhibit called Heavenly Bodies, which was the highest attended exhibit ever, and it was about the vestments of the Catholic Church and how all these top designers interpreted the best, you know, how a priest dressed. And I don't mean a priest like we mean, but, you know, a Catholic priest or anyone in, in Christianity dresses. And I went through the exhibit, and I thought it was absolutely magnificent. It was beautiful. It was something that you would even, it actually brought tears to my eyes. It was so gorgeous. But after I left, I said, don't they know that, don't they know that the first couturier was a Kohen Gadol, was the, was the outfit of the priest? It was the outfit that has, that God used two chapters in Leviticus just for an outfit. So God is the first fashion couture, the first master oh, couturier is no, Hashem. So, so you're telling me that yes. God is a fashion designer. Well, let me ask you a question. When when the Jews no, no, left, I have no problem because oh, I love this book. It has thank you. pictures. Oh yes, it has pictures too. <laughs> of course, we, we yeah I have to have beautiful Ooh. pictures, but. Really I beautiful. Have. Okay, we, I, they want us to take a phone call. Let's oh, take a phone okay. call. Oh, okay, phone call. So uh, stop looking at the pictures. Uh, no, please look at the phone. I like it's books such a with beautiful pictures. Book. It's and a it's beautiful, beautiful book. You're on the air with Heshi, Bumi, and Sawyer. And me. And, of course, Toby. Did we lose the call? Hello? Don't be bashful. You have to push that. I know. Button. Hello? Yeah, 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 Rabbi Tischler. Hello. Hi. Rabbi Tischler. Not a rabbi, but okay, go rabbi ahead. Rabbi Tischler. Yes. 
Yeah, go ahead. Who are we he speaking? Told me to call you. Oh, how are you? Uh, who is this? A uh, Abe? Abraham? This is, this is your. This is your big chassid. Uh, the the one that you came to visit after the kidney operation. You came to visit by my house, and I've decided. I've decided you should not run for city council. Okay. You should run for president of the United States. Okay. Wow. <laughs> How ambitious. I remember. Uh, yes. Okay. Nowadays, so Mickey Mouse what, can what run I, against what, this what, current what, sitting president. What I do is Abraham, he did have a kidney operation, and he wasn't well, and uh, they took him home, and he was a little uh, depressed. And you know me, I like to go visit people, and Abraham invited me into his house, and me and him had a good talk, and he made a funny video with me. And how are you feeling, my brother? Are you feeling better? Because you weren't doing so good when I was How there. am I feeling? zero tubes in me, everything out. And but he, he, the doctor told me I have to recuperate a lot. I have to take it easy to this look, to this look. And with the, with the bracha from Rabbi Tishle Shlita, I will become as healthy, maybe even more healthy than he is. I love you. I'm so happy for you. And you know what they say, when somebody goes to visit a sick person, they automatically get a little bit better. I wish you the best. And you know, you are, you are gonna, you're going to stay on my rounds. You know me, I keep going around and I will keep visiting on you. The only thing I ask when I get to your house, please have a Diet Coke ready for me. <laughs> that was a joke. Okay. Okay, hey, we lost. Yeah, I'd like to go back to Toby for a minute. But no, okay. I'm going to ask Toby. I, I have, uh, Toby, you, you, Toby, you, you, you into the fashion thing? I got that with God. Yes. You know, we have a vice president called Kam Kamala Kamula Kamala Harris. Kamala, Kamala Harris. She is a woman. Now we understand that women in this country are um, sometimes we consider them uh, as secondary or. Uh, uh, you know, not equal to man. Okay? Not anymore. Uh, I, I, where so do you live? They're not equal. They're superior where do you, to man. Where do you live? So, uh, is, where do you live? Is, is, you want to know my proof of this? Would you like to know my proof of yeah, this? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. We had uh, one of the most powerful women ever to run for president. Her name was Hillary Clinton. Yes. Okay. She lost the first time to a black man. Now, don't get upset with me what I'm going to say now, but the black people in this country don't even make up about 20% of the of the of voting of this country. People in America were so prejudiced that they, who don't, some of them, you know, with, everybody says that we're fighting Ashy, with the Ashy, women. She lost the women vote as well. No, no. She no. did not carry the women no, vote. No, no, she did carry the She did the, not she carry did. the women vote in that election. Women didn't vote for her because they, like felt, her. They, felt they felt she, she was wasn't. A she knew they knew she was a okay, crook. So I got you. So we wanted a black president to make a point, but even though most likely we should have elected a woman president before a black president, but it's fine. Good. Barack Obama won. He was more energetic. He was smarter. Whatever the deal is, even though Hillary was more qualified than Barack at the time. Okay, Actually, let's stick to the uh, subject. I, I wanna, You're talking about I, Kamala Harris I wanna, now. I want to get yes, to. So let's I, talk was about my point she's to actually make. in my book. Well, so good. So now I want to make point number two. Okay, Barack is done. Hillary runs against a Trump, who everybody says was a dumbbell. They don't like him. They hated him. Again, Trump crushed. Hillary. And turned out to be one of the greatest presidents in history. Again, I'm not knocking the point. The people Trump did not crush this, Hillary because she was a woman. This country, you're wrong. So I'm gonna, you're making it in nothing woman, to do with whether I voted woman, for her no, 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 or no, no, what I feel about her. You. Does a woman in power can she still look pretty? Can she uh, address her her womanish thing? Or why not? not? Didn't President like, Trump's wife? Yeah, but that's the, that's, that's the first, first lady. lady. She was in a league yeah. of her own, and yeah. she herself uh, yeah, but, was a fashion. Uh, okay, okay, you're but right. You're 100% right. Oh, I gotta scream over show, everybody no, here. Hold no, no, on. All the fashion yeah. magazines, just to slap Trump, were ignoring Melania Trump. And let me tell you something. There's nothing fashionable about Kamala Harris. Zero. So maybe that's my point. Okay, okay, wait. Okay. Let's 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 call things the way they are. Let's put it on the table. The only qualifications for being a first lady is that you're married to the president. So there's there's no power base in there, real power base. So to say somebody like you know uh, Melania Trump is very well dressed and compare her to Kamala Harris's accomplishments is ridiculous. Whether I like Kamala or not, there's somebody. She's not. Somebody had a position as a as a first Kamala's lady. Kamala's not the first lady. 
She's an inadequate, incompetent vice president. Okay. She, who's waiting for right, Biden to croak. She is, she is a vice president, and she has more power than the first lady. And that's just the way it is, as far as that's concerned. I don't agree with she has Kamala more, has, pro, She has more power, probably, than Biden. I, uh, that, you know what? If she does, then she does. But so, that's not my point. My, 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 point point is, yeah. my point is the power base is Kamala Harris. And you're right. You don't have to. You don't have to look like a man in order to have a power base. I mean, listen. Don't you think that the Aisha Chayil, who is the epitome of, of of what a Jewish woman is, don't you think if you read the text of Aisha Chayil, do you know how powerful she is? You know wh- you how know, much she does. We know. We know so, that behind every good man is a woman. We no, know no, that. no. There's Aisha Chayil is not behind anybody. If you read the words, when you when you sing to your wife on Friday night, why don't you read what you're saying? This is not. This is you're not singing to your wife about a woman that's behind you. On the contrary, you're singing about a wife that's trying to pave the way for you, which means she's standing before you. You see, you're, you're a bigot. You're prejudiced. I'm not a bigot. <laughs> so well, I'm just opposite of you, and well, you don't no, like has it. She, no, has she? Has she? I want to zero she in believes, on She believes she believes women are better than men. They are. Uh, th- th- oh my God! All right, all right, all right. Did you just hear that? I'm not here. To, I'm, I'm not here to get into a dispute okay. between the, dispute between the sexes. Okay. This is you know. Oh, but, gotcha. Okay. I, I, I'd rather zero in a little bit more on your book and what you're what you're oh, saying. Oh, thank but let's, you. Let's let's talk about this. Okay, go ahead. Has she mentioned that you went through many tribulations in your life? Yes. And I think what he was leading up to one question was, how did you manage to maintain your faith, notwithstanding? impact of those tribulations many people that go through hardships in life they suffer a loss of faith as a result they say how yes. could god have done this to me yes. that's the first thing and i'll let yes. you address it but i want to ask the second question then of course is how does faith and fashion come together okay so let's well, let's let's take them one at a time okay, okay. so I'll, un- I'll unpack you what have, you just what you just handed me okay you have the calm. <laughs> so i i have to say that I, I, you know, not every adversity and automatically came to me that I said, oh, you know, I'm so, you know, I could find God in all my, in all my trials and tribulations. I think that, you know, you're not the first person that asked me this today. I've been on four podcasts and everybody asked me the same question. And I think because I had a, um, a turbulent childhood, I didn't have, I didn't have a very wonderful upbringing. I was abandoned by my mother when I was 18 years old and I didn't see her solution within the trouble that that's where it lies that's why your Toby, passion lies I, I and if a person's question. able to do that that's how they build their faith yeah so Toby. Um, because in the in the end i have to tell you because i unfortunately or fortunately i can tell you i could speak from authority i mean i i've just you know survived the battle with stage four uterine cancer wow. and i'm sitting here right now having wow. a conversation with you and wow. i have to tell you that in the end, after I after I had this this effect of you know how did how did God do this to me exactly what you said yeah, I didn't want to bring that up right but, uh, how did God do this to me and and I you know I gathered myself and I said you know what Toby all these things that you've been preaching and learning about having faith in, in God and and everything now's your big big test and it really and and this book came out of that test so toby i want to ask you a question and, and we're going a little bit off subject uh-huh. and i didn't want to talk about your your issue with, with with the cancer but you did face death right now you did feel i mean they did tell you that it might be possible no I, you know what i you know what the, the the other thing that i learned also is that i am not a realist i'm a faithist i really am the real, I can't, I, I fly above reality. When the doctor's talking to me, I'm like, I, you know, my husband is right here to, to, to testify with me. I would tell the doctors, you're just a doctor. You're only you're a not doctor. God. Now, you know, when they take your temperature, 98.6, 98.6% is, is God, um, you know, watching over you. And everything else around you is just the balance of it. Yes, the chemotherapy. Yes, I have to do this. Yes, I have to do that. But really... It's all so you were not you were not in fear of dying at all. No, you didn't. You didn't. You didn't believe you were ever. Uh, there was even a possibility. You know, initially when I first when I was first diagnosed and I had that you know the initial shock and you have to digest it, I was very very fearful. I'm like I can't believe you after everything that I've been through and now this you know I have to go through this and I was very fearful of it. But um, in the end. It, not in the actually in in the beginning of the of this uh, journey that I had with this disease, um, I just took hold of myself and I also surrounded myself. You know, you are you are judged by the first by the people that you're surrounded with. I happen to be fortunate enough to be surrounded by 
15 women that are powerhouses and all the commonalities, everybody has faith. And we had, we had Torah classes before each and every chemotherapy session. Support groups, so to speak. Yes, they are my, my rock and, you know, my, and, and of course my husband, who is absolutely is amazing, and my daughter. And we, we all kept on the same page. This is, this is totally, totally faith. And I, it, this is all addressed in the book. And it, it's, a, it's a... But did you, did you prepare yourself or you just forget about it, did not accept it at all, and said, listen, this will never happen and I'm not going to die? I, I, you know, I prepared myself in the beginning. I did the, you know, the normal thing, like, you know, okay, I have to write my will and I have to, you know, I have to reassess everything. No, no, but, that's not what I but, meant. Not what I meant that you did your paperwork. In your brain, what was your last... Thought? Yeah. What's, what, oh, you want, really want to know? Yeah. Toby, what is your legacy? What, it, what, it, what are you going to leave? And I said, I'm leaving this book. Whatever happens, I have to write this book because this is so powerful and these two subjects are so amazing when they're tied together and this is such an incredible way of learning Torah. It's probably the most fashionable, glamorous way you're ever going to be learn learning all about Torah and, and your love of Judaism. You're and a, I'm the only one that, that That's could, where I was going next, Toby. Go ahead. You're obviously, you're, very, you're, you're a fascinating woman and, and you have a vast amount of life experience in various different areas and you've gone through a lot how first of all does the book as the reader reads the book does it help build the faith does it direct you into how to help build yes. your own faith it does yes okay. is now, this only for how? Jewish women no. no 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 is no. this only Jewish no faith? no it's not it, you know it happens to be I you know ironically the you know a, a, my, my core group that surrounded me they're not all Jewish one of my closest friends is a is a Christian minister at a, that was trained by Rick Warren in Saddleback. Well, so, belief in so, God is not is no. not is not uh, and, reserved only so and exclusively to Jewish people. Again. It's a beautiful. It happens the, to be a beautiful, book, a beautiful book, book, book as well. The book is called "The House of Faith and Faith and Fashion." Uh, it's by Toby Rubenstein. How do we get this book? Um, actually, you can get it on my website www.thehouseoffaithandfashion.com. You can get it on Amazon, Kindle, and Barnes and Noble. And if you're in Jerusalem, I'm so excited. You can get it at Pomeranz Bookstore in the old city now. <laughs> so I'm really excited. So Are you going to have a book signing, by the way? I I'm, I, I really, really want to. Yeah. I, I well, When they signed, called me and told me that they, uh, that they want to carry it, I started to cry. That's my dream come Kobe, true. Kobe, give me just one small example. Go ahead. Something, some way, how the book ties fashion to faith. Okay. A small, just a little, a taste, a teaser. A teaser. A teaser. Okay. Um, uh, I, there's so many examples. What do I, I have to pick the best one. Um, I think the best one is um, I, ha I happen to have an obsession with shoes. Okay. I, I know guys S like shoes. Sixteen hundred dollars shoes. Yes, six, yes, six, I have an addiction I know. for Manolo Blahniks, I, I and I love know, my Manolo. I, I, I want you to know my daughter-in-law wasn't doing so well for a couple of months, I know. and she just got better. Thank God. And the first thing that came out of her mouth was. Uh, Big H, where are my sixteen hundred dollars shoes? Yes. Uh, are you crazy, girl? That's what no. you No, are you should be happy to give it to her because I she's will. she uh, she's you know she's well. Actually, yeah. I had the conversation with my husband saying, you know, they closed that wonderful store in Blahnik in the city, and we we had no store for like a. Uh, but he's only an attorney. You don't want to put him into a poorhouse and no, buy no, every no, day sixteen hundred no. dollars shoes. He's, he's, he's a, he does very nicely. Thank <laughs> I'm sure. you. But Toby, tell us about that teaser. No, give you don't. Yeah. You know, I'm. What I'm trying to say is like, you know, actually the House of Faith and Fashion was, was something that I came up with because of my Manola shoes. I was, I was a Rebbiton in, um, in, we'll call it an enclave in Long Island. And um, uh, we, um, people in the congregation were more interested in what I was wearing than actually if I even, you know, knew how to dive in at all. And every, every week it was like, oh, I want to go, where'd you get this? Where'd you get that? I said, you know, I'm going to actually teach teach Torah, you know, through your obsession with fashion, but it, it started with a, a hot pink um, snakeskin pump by, uh, you know, Manola Blahniks. And what I did was, I said, do you understand how holy shoes are in the Torah? Do you even understand what they are? No. Do you understand when you have to, you know, well, I give the, I give the examples of when the Kohen has to wear his shoes and take off his shoes. 
you know, when, you know, the, the idea of, you know, it even tells you in the Torah what shoe to put on in the morning. Should you put on your right shoe first or your left shoe first? These are very, very important things. And I thought that was now, a debate exclusively by Archie Bunker and the meathead. No, <laughs> and, then, and, then talk, and then really if you get more sentimental, I mean, you talk about, you know, what in the Holocaust, what did the Nazis collect the shoes for? You know, they had an obsession. You know, every time you go into a museum, you see all the shoes of yeah. all the Jews. If I'm, if I'm getting the point correctly, no, no, it seems as though this. you were taking physical objects like fashion and you were bringing out the material. You were bring, you were taking no. the materials and bringing out the spiritual within them. You know, and that's how you our, make the connection. Listen, our, it's, a, it's a fundamental thing like in Hasidut or, or from the Baal Shem Tov. You must elevate the material. You have to elevate it. So you can elevate a pair of Manola Blahnik shoes. You can elevate a ball gown. You can elevate all these things to a higher level because it's all in see, the Torah. I, now I'm interested all. in reading the no, book. No, but you know, I want to see how it's done, how that, goes, goes, how that plays itself out. Let me tell you how I understand it. Linda has one of these fancy pocketbooks, and by stuffing it with all my cash, it elevates uh, the pocketbook. All right. Oh, okay. 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 I, I think, well, I think, I think right. Toby's saying a little bit more, okay. and she's actually. I thought, I thought, thought it was a, thought give, it was a us, give us a deep. Give us a name from an expensive bag. Uh, uh, oh, I, I did. Do you uh, even know? I, well, uh, wait, 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 wait. The most expensive bag, the, if you could think of. Oh, something. I, she just bought one for. Well, like, over a hundred grand. A hundred grand. Oh, yeah. Over a hundred. A Birkin. I would, I would, I would he doesn't even know a Birkin. You never me. heard of a Birkin. Excuse me. Am I allowed to tell anybody well, about my beautiful Tom McCann shoes? All I could do is. I they would, still make those things. <laughs> <laughs> I all I know is if she buys a hundred grand pocketbook, I cut my wrist right now. She her budget maximum is four hundred bucks, and she came home with an eleven hundred dollar pocketbook. I wanted to kill her. She says, "Woman, it's my money." I says, "No, it's not your money, Linda. You stole it from me." And then you pack it. Uh -huh. You know, I went to visit a friend of mine the other day. Uh, we went for pizza, and we're sitting in his house, and they're all looking at Linda. I said, "Why are you looking at Linda? I'm the candidate. I'm the star." No, no, Linda's holding this pocketbook. She won't let go, and it's so big. What is in there? I said, "Junk." And they said. No, no, babies, that's not junk. I said, I know that girl walks around with cash. By, and by the way, a Birkin, a hundred thousand, is not the most expensive. I wouldn't buy my. I buy myself a ten dollar wallet, and she buys herself a eleven $1 hundred dollar pocket. So book. Linda, you're getting a Birkin. <laughs> Linda, you're not even not getting a Birkin. You're lucky I'm bringing home ten dollar flowers. Let's take week. a caller, Hashi. Let's see. Let's take a caller. Here. Okay. Hello, you're on the air with Hashi, Toby, Soya, and Bumi. Hi. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes. I see. Yeah. How are you? I am doing great and still alive. In two weeks, I'm hoping to be elected to the uh, nomination of city council. Speak up, my friend. Don't He's keep gone. us waiting with He's bated gone. breath. I see. Yes. Can hear you clear. Okay. Ask your question. I don't know. We're having problems with the with the phones and the shows. We always have problems. I don't know what's wrong with my boy. Yeah, he doesn't know. He doesn't prepare himself. He comes late. So I blames I, Mr. Producer I, always. I started reading the book. It is. I'm telling you right now. It's like you're literally like living Toby's life. She's telling you stuff that happened, but it's like fascinating because it's like how she got into fashion from the beginning. Well, you know, I really understand it, and I'll tell you why. And I'm not going to make a Do joke you? about it. Please, uh, I'm going to tell you why. To I don't. I don't. You know, I'm not a, a fancy dresser. I wear a nice white shirt. I, 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 I have a pair of slacks, shoes, and I walk around and I do my job. You I even put on the, ties now. I, I go to job sites, and I never really looked to be fashionable. And now... That's not a Gucci? No, it's not a Gucci tie. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Linda did buy it's a Da Vinci tie. Yeah. <laughs> da Vinci. It's 55 bucks, and, 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 and I had to get that stain <laughs> out. You know how I got the stain out? I put Windex on it. I can't believe it came out. Anyways, so... <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> well, that's like Windex. from my big fat Greek wedding. Right. right? <laughs> so that's what I, you know, and, and I'm happy I didn't ruin the tie because Linda killed me because I'm already missing four ties. She asked me, where are those ties? No, no, I took them to the clean is really there in the garbage i really destroyed those ties but i learned that 
you know, when you're teaching young kids and you go to tell a story to them or you go to the synagogue or you go to the youth center or when I preach to other people, they look at you in a different manner. When you're well-dressed, like the other night, somebody says, oh, Heshi, you look like a million dollars. If you dress well, people are looking at you and you're able to um, give over your uh, thoughts, your speech, your, your, your faith, your religion. That's why, you're right, the priests or the rabbis or the imams have to always look presentable. And now that I've been running, I actually did buy myself a more expensive suit and I don't wear it because I'm scared I'm going to ruin it. So I still wear the cheap stuff. But my, 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 my point to you is I do know... If I get not finished. Right, when you dress better and the people look at you. So I understand, so like you I said, when they looked at you, they looked at you, to, even though whatever it is, you still were able to bring them in to learn with you and study with you because yeah. you look so good. But guess what? It says that in the Pir- in Pirkei Avos, in Ethics of the Father, that a beautiful person, ha- your obligation is to, is to maintain yourself because you have more influence over people. Pirkei Avos. I like to be the regular guy. I think looking okay and, and regular than looking like, you know, people want to look like uh, like the, my day Rock Hudson or John F. Kennedy or uh, like I, today. What's the big famous actors? Uh, I don't know who they Brad are. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Yeah, yet you and me, but there's new ones today. But then, I you know. know. You know, we don't know that. Angelina, you know, my favorite. Uh, Angelina favorite, Jolie. Angelina Jolie and another one. What's the other one? The, 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 the singer. She's from the Beyonce. Bronx. Not, oh, I love J-Lo. Her. J-Lo. I love Beyonce and I love J-Lo, by the way. Because they are not older like me, but they're pretty cool, you know what I mean? And they do look good, and that's what people do. I still believe that you don't have to go to the point of, of over-exaggeration and spending money. You could. I know your husband's wealthy. That, this is not the po- <laughs> that's not the point of the book at I, all. I, I so that. I don't even know what you're talking I'm, about, I'm but joking. it's your show, no, so I'm just going to say quiet. I'm just making sure because I know Linda's listening to the show. And Linda, she, go and buy whatever you want. Linda, she's out. <laughs> Linda, I'm she's, giving you permission. Linda, she's smoking. You have his credit card. No, Actually, no. you call me and I'll tell you what. No, to buy. no, no. Yes, I please. Mean, she can tell you the best shop. I will tell you. Actually, you're sinking fast. Felipe. I really eat Prada, Felipe. Gucci, <laughs> Dolce and oh, Gabbana, oh, Manola Blahnik, Jimmy Choo. <laughs> you're finished. I'm Keep meat. talking. I'm Keep bold. talking. I, 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 Toby, your husband's starting to pale a little bit also. I know. <laughs> nah, he's I used know. to it. <laughs> Carolina Herrera, Oscar de la okay, Renta, we Valentino. Got you, we got you. I got you. We got you. I'm a dead man tonight. Yes. Uh, I, I want to I talk about some local politics with you because you're not a dumbbell girl. I'm not a small. dumbbell girl. As a matter of fact, I, you know, I was, I had great influence in the Giuliani administration. And me and so you, I remember it quite clearly. Me and you, we and you chat quite often on, on text, WhatsApp, and phones, and you've seen what I've done over the yes. last year. So you are very knowledgeable in our local politics and city politics. You know that I, I'm very angry with the blaster. He's an idiot how he's run the city. No, so that's this, obvious. My question to you is, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Go. We are going to election in two weeks. Forget yes. about the city council. I know you support me 100%. I don't live here, but I but, support you. So who do you want? I mean, you don't have much of a choice. Who do you want for your next mayor? You can't shake your head. You got to pick one. I I actually really don't know. I really don't know. And that's a shame with less than two weeks I, ago. I mean, you know, I, I happen to really like what Curtis Lewa stands for. Um, I think that uh, he's somebody that it's almost like he's a, a comic book strip about like, you know, the superhero that swoops in uh, on the and saves the Are city. Are you stepping forward to the general election, so, Toby? I think Heshi's I asking about I, the primary, I, I, the Democratic no, I, primary. Well, you, you, yeah, you, no, you, you Curtis Lee was primary. He's primary. He's primary. But he's, he's Republican, but we're talking about now. I am, no, no, I, well, first to... of all, I'm not a Democrat, so you're assuming that I'm a Democrat, right. so don't make assumptions. Wow. You know what they say wow. about people but that no, make he's assumptions. running against a good guy by the name of Fernando Mateos. Yes. So both of them, I think, but I think both of them are really more better, no matter what, better than Yang. And here's my problem. Even in my community, we're split down the middle. Some guys go for uh, Yang and some guys go for Eric Adams. The point is, is I I did like Yang for a while, but then you had my uh, councilman, Kalman Yeager, and and Eichenstein do one of the little tricks again. And here's my problem. But then he backpedaled on his support for Israel. Israel, So I didn't mind that even Yang 
Yang backpedaled. Disturbing but, to me. But you never heard any word coming out of Carmen Yeager and Eichenstein saying, listen, I supported him, but he's wrong now. He has to make a comment or apology or, or we don't agree with him. Again, my two uh, 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 politicians had disappeared again. And that's my problem. So I believe that Eric Adams is going to beat Yang. Now he's way, he's ahead of the polls. I don't know if Eric Adams is going to beat um, Curtis because, but again, there is, a, 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 if you, people don't come out to vote, Eric Adams will win it. Matter of fact, Eric Adams tonight is having a fundraiser, which I should have had one, but instead they gave it to him in, in, in Flatbush. He's having a fundraiser by the Jewish people. So you guys have Can to- Can we make, go there uh, after? I, I hear the food is very good. So can we all yeah. head there afterwards? Well, I'm going to be at a speaking event for some young girls who are having a reunion in their school reunion, and I'm going to give a speech tonight. I'm going to, I even promised to put on my jacket and close my tie. Um, wow. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's number one. So now that's your politics. You, of course, you said you're Republican, so that means you voted for Trump. Don't smile. Like yes. Me. Trump lost. I know. Okay. You're president today, Biden. People say he's not. He's your president, too. Right. I voted for Trump. I'm a registered as a Democrat. No, 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 okay. Right. Okay, but no, no, you're allowed to do that. Uh, do you think Biden is doing a good job? I, you know what? The truth, I have to tell you the truth. I'm not paying attention. I mean, our country. I'm not paying attention because because I, I, find, I find that. I lost my my ability to really care because my candidate didn't win, and then what he's been doing so far is so ineffective. It just I just lost interest, you see, and I'm not the only one that right. feels that way. And actually, that's my problem. everyone feels so, that so way. That's my problem to you, audience. We're coming to the end of the show. Just because we lost, you can't feel this way. You're right. You're right. The, the, our gas prices have gone up, and Bumi, you called it a couple of weeks ago that it's going to go through the roof. Uh, you also, I understand about the borders that where the immigrants are coming in. Oh, okay. uh, about inflation. We talk about uh, a total disaster it's, it's by the Biden administration. The point being is, is we must. And no matter what, in this country, always rally around our leaders. I'm not happy with Biden and Camilla, but again, we must accept them as our president and vice president. You want to run away from trouble? Nobody wanna... does not accept them. We know they are our president and vice president, but we have to challenge what they are doing in office, and that's why we have the United States Senate, the House of Representatives. You know, we have to challenge wrongful activities have, or I have disactive. To, I have to say one. I have to say one thing. I. I really think we're living at a time where we have to pay more attention to local politics than the broader picture, because we never we never really took it seriously. Our councilmen, and our assemblymen, we, ne we who are they? Who knows? No one even has an answer. They don't even know which district they, they live in. in. No, well, since I Dove Hyken retired, he was one of the great. You're, men you're right, and I, and and Dove Hyken really is, and what he's doing right now is also also, also wonderful. Where can people pick up your book, The House of Faith and Fashion, by Toby Rubenstein? Where can they I, pick it up? I like you. You're really good. I don't like her. No, I, I like her. She focuses. You no, don't focus. She's, she's okay. fired. Yeah, no, no, she's, she's fine. Where can people pick up your book? Uh, the, you can get it on my website, www.thehouseoffaithandfashion.com, or you can get it on Amazon, Kindle, or Barnes & Noble. You're going to let me know when you have a book signing. I'd like you to personally autograph a book for oh, me. Oh, okay? I, I will do that right now. We're going to do that right now. I will we're, give that right now. We're at the last minute, so I want to give you my Heshi rant. First What's your Heshi rant? First of all, Toby, I want to ask you one question. I have to buy you. You keep saying one question. Right, so I'm asking okay. this. Uh, uh, my daughter in law wants $1,600 shoes. I am not buying it. Any way I can get one of Manola those. Manola Blonde. No, 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 no. Any way I can get one of those shoes that, like, it would Generic brands. Generic brands. No, <laughs> I, I, I don't speak that language. I'm Let's, sorry. She wants I, red I, bottom. I don't know. Louboutin. So I, would, I, would, uh, I, would, I would paint it red. This play yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> You could take a red magic marker to a cheap pair of shoes. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for listening to our show. Toby, you're a wonderful guest. Thank you for you having me. Good luck with the book, Toby. Next thank you. Wednesday. Thank you. Next week, Wednesday, is our last show before the election, June 22nd. Vote now. for Heshi. Heshi, I love you. Heshi Tischler. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. And I love all of you. Thank you for listening to our show. I hope you had a good time and had a good laugh with us. Thank you. <laughs>